And speaking of MMA fights that I am not going to try to predict a winner of, in a couple of weeks the UFC is going to have another huge championship main event. Middleweight champion of the world, Israel Adesanya, is going to challenge light heavyweight champion of the world, Jan Blachowicz, for the light heavyweight championship of the world. And I am very much looking forward to that one. So Adesanya, he's out looking for another belt. He's looking to become the champ champ, or as he would call it, the champ squared. And there is so much about this fight to talk about, and uh, I, I, it's very hard to know exactly where to start. But here's where I'm going to start with it, and that is exactly what Israel Adesanya's goals are in terms of accepting this fight. Because it isn't really about having two belts. And if you need to see evidence of that, all you really need to do is actually look at the preliminary card. Look all the way down to the bottom of the preliminary card and find a name of the guy by the name of Carlos Ulbert. Now, for people who don't watch the Dana White Contender Series, that's a name that there's a very good possibility that you haven't heard before. But if this past fall you did tune into some episodes of that, there was a very good chance that you saw an episode where Israel Adesanya was present in the building. And he was there to support his teammate at his MMA team in New Zealand, Carlos Olberg. Olberg was there in Las Vegas trying to earn a UFC contract. And of course he did win his fight. He earned that contract and he's going to fight on that upcoming card. Now in the UFC there are a lot of ways that those preliminary cards get put together. The preliminary cards in particular. One of the ways that a lot of these guys end up on these cards is that somebody higher up the card. Now somebody in the main event or perhaps in the co-main event you know, actually asked Dana White for this favor and said, you know, I'll, I'll fight on this particular pay-per-view and I would, you know, I'm going to ask you for this favor. I'm going to ask you to put this teammate of mine on the card. And Dana White does seem to very much enjoy granting those favors. Okay, so I have a suspicion. I don't know this for a fact, but I think that the odds are very good that Israel Adesanya asked for Carlos Olberg to be on this card. Now, really, he doesn't necessarily need to do that for Ulberg because in that particular fight that he had on the Dana White Contender Series, you know, Carlos Ulberg is a beast. This guy is going to be a huge star. But he also happens to fight in the light heavyweight class. And I think that that in and of itself, that in and of itself gives us a clue as to what exactly Israel Adesanya's motivations are in taking this fight. And I think that one thing that Israel Adesanya absolutely does not intend to do is he doesn't intend to hold up the light heavyweight division for a very long period of time. Whatever his goals are, being the light heavyweight champion is really more of a means to an end. You know, I think that even as the champion, I don't think that Israel Adesanya is going to do anything that would keep his teammate away from light heavyweight championship opportunities over the long run because he's, he's a much better teammate than that. I mean, exactly how good is a teammate is Israel Adesanya? And how supportive is he of Carlos Olberg? Well, here's a little fact that I was discovered to, I was surprised to learn recently. And that was that between September and December of this past year, Israel Adesanya had a total of 10 days outside of quarantine. The rest of that time he was spent quarantining under New Zealand's very strict COVID laws because of the amount of travel that he was doing back and forth from places like the United States, back and forth from Fight Island. And one of those trips that Israel Adesanya took was to Las Vegas to be present when Carlos Olberg fought for his contract. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. I don't think that Israel Adesanya is going to do anything that's going to present a long-term obstacle to Carlos Olberg I think that he's going to do everything that he can to try to push Carlos Olberg to the moon. And with a guy, with the support of a guy like Adesanya behind him, you know, I think that it's very, very safe to say that it most likely will happen for Carlos Olberg. Like I said before, the guy is a beast. So if being the light heavyweight champion over for a long period of time is probably something that is not in Israel Adesanya's plans, well, then what is in Israel Adesanya's plans? That's not a complicated question. It doesn't have a complicated answer. Israel Adesanya is goat hunting. 
he is out to prove himself the greatest of all time. And in actuality, it's it's my personal opinion. I mean, I, God, the MMA gods, you know, they they love to see. They, they seem to love to throw uh, to throw dirt under my skates every time that I say anything even like this. But I think that of the fighters still active in MMA right now, I do think that Israel Adesanya is actually probably the guy with the best opportunity to prove himself to be the greatest of all time. It comes down to Adesanya. It comes down to Habib Nurmagomedov, and it comes down to John Jones. Now, Habib is out of the sweepstakes in the sense that he stopped building his resume. He retired at 29-0, and and while I do think that there are some very valid questions to be raised in particular about the guys that he fought before he arrived in the, uh, the UFC, now, he still remains a very strong contender. I think he's going to remain a very strong contender to be the pound-for-pound pound greatest of all time. Now, John Jones is still in the sweepstakes in the sense that, you know, we're expecting him to come back and to continue to build his resume. But he hasn't done one thing that Israel Adesanya has been out doing, and he hasn't been doing the work of late. It's been a very long time since he took his last fight. As a matter of fact, the last time that he had his last fight, it was as the light heavyweight champion of the world. He turned around, he dropped that belt and said that, well, I'm going to move on up to heavyweight and I'm going to go chase after, after Stipe. And since then, they just haven't been able to get anything on paper. He's been inactive for more than a year. And because Adesanya keeps saying over and over again that he wants that fight with John Jones, and John Jones seems to at the very least imply that he eventually wants a fight with Israel Adesanya, if only to settle their rivalry, Jones is actually putting himself at a pretty big disadvantage. Right now, he's a guy who is no longer a champion, but he still seems to be trying to conduct his career as if he is a champion. I mean, let's face it, in my opinion, you know, the sense that I get from John Jones is that the only reason why he's moved up to heavyweight is because he thinks that he's going to tear through everybody at heavyweight the same way that he blew through everybody at light heavyweight, I mean, with the possible exception of Dominic Reyes. But he honestly thinks that he's going to move on and just run that division the way that he ran late heavyweight. Israel Adesanya, he's doing the other thing. He's a champion who right now is conducting his career as if he is a challenger. And what I mean by that is that Israel Adesanya, now right now he's the champion of his division. There's no reason why he needs to be going out and taking risks and taking chances. But by moving on to light heavyweight and not even taking the time to bulk up for that division, by just going on and saying, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna step on up. I'm gonna fight Jan Blachowicz as is. He's taking a very big chance. He's taking a big chance stepping outside of his division at all. Uh, because if he loses this fight to Jan Blachowicz, his bid for greatest of all time, I'm not going to say that it dies right there on the canvas if he doesn't win that fight but it definitely takes a few knocks down. Now, meanwhile, John Jones, instead of just getting to work and taking a fight, he keeps holding out. I mean, in particular, he keeps holding out for money. And I suppose if you're approaching the whole thing under the presumption that you are just going to go on and just win the heavyweight championship of the world, regardless of whether it's Stipe Miocic or Francis Naganu, if you're operating under the presumption that you're just going to go on and just do it and just become the champion, I suppose it makes sense. You might as well have the best deal on paper that you can have. But the more time that he spends inactive right now, the more disadvantaged he's going to be when Israel Adesanya finally catches up to him and they finally get that fight. Which a lot of people, I mean in particular Uncle Chael, a lot of people are saying that right now John Jones versus Israel Adesanya is the single biggest fight that you could possibly make in the UFC at this time. So Israel Adesanya, it's pretty clear what he's doing and what he's thinking right now. John Jones, not nearly so much. And if he, at the end of his career, wants to finally be hailed as the greatest of all time, I mean, something that, quite frankly, he often acts like he's just entitled to. But if he really wants to be viewed that way at the end of his career, he needs to get cracking. Because regardless of how great a fighter is, and there is no doubt that John Jones is one of the greatest of all time, but if he lets Israel Adesanya continue to outwork him, Israel Adesanya is going to beat him, and there really can be no question about that. 